let's get into the actual stat building part of the game. Take all our classes. Get acquainted with everything. There's a buzz of excitement in the red magic classroom, one which quickly dies when Professor Gravener makes his entrance. Get to your seats. Hurry up. No chatter. In this class, carelessness might cost you your fingers. He certainly doesn't set out to make friends, does he? Here you will be learning the seductive art of red magic, the evocation and control of energy. With this power, you might summon a breeze, light a fire, or call a distant object to hand. I say that it's seductive not because of the power itself, but because simple minds prefer simple solutions. Blast your enemies with lightning! Tear buildings apart with earthquakes! Let the world around you burn! Fall victim to such vulgar fantasies, and you leave yourself vulnerable to those capable of creative thought. He snaps his fingers in the air. One inattentive moment, and you lose control of the forces you have summoned. After that, you will only be remembered as an unpleasant stain on the walls. Remember, power can in itself be a weakness. Do not confuse power and control. With focus and control, the tiniest power can change the course of history. A gentle touch might tip the scales, warn an ally, pick a lock. Or stop a heart. The professor pauses, scaling along the length of his nose. No, Mr. Lynch. Red magic will not allow you to apply force inside an object or a creature. For that, you will need a different magic. So that's Tyrannus Lynch. Not only is he a Lynch, he's a creepy Lynch. I suppose that's what Toad Hall is for. The creeps. Iris Academy group students into six halls. No. Oh, okay. It just is the same thing from last time. Give me some more concepts. Come on now. Well, what do I need then? Nothing that you will learn here. And if you interrupt me again, you will be spending this weekend in detention wondering. The force of his glare melts any desire to comment. Now for your lessons. I got one. And one stress. Your first attempts at raising force will do little more than move the air around you. You find this disappointing, don't you? What use, you think, is moving air? How can that destroy your enemies? <laughs> Simple minds. A strong wind could disperse poisonous gases or move them to a new target. Carry your scent away from an enemy, or erase your tracks in the dust. A simple breeze carrying dust can reveal hidden shapes and exits as it moves. If you cannot master its use, you have no business tampering with greater powers. Now, concentrate and make the air move around you. Breeze! Breeze is very handy when you're in dungeons and you come to a crossroads. If you cast Breeze, the typically it'll go towards where the exit is. So that's very handy. After class, I go for a walk to stretch my legs. Iris Academy does have a nice campus. The colors of the flowers shimmer gently in the sunlight. I see an older girl in horse hall robes crouching down next to one of the little hedge sections. She looks like she's talking to the plants. I don't know, maybe she is talking to them. It sounds like something Professor Poston might encourage. Paths lead away from the main quad into more secluded areas. There are some nice benches here in the shade of the trees. A nice place to sit and think while getting some fresh air. Beyond the trees, I can see some open grassy areas. People could play football out there, or at least throw a frisbee. As I'm walking along, something falls past my face. Not close enough to hit me, but... What was that? I look down. There's a single shoe lying on the ground. Did someone throw it at me? I look up. Over my head, a pair of black stocking-clad legs are wrapped around a, t a tree branch. Only one foot still has its shoe. And above those legs... I love this new character. Her design is so good. 
is a girl in Snake Hall robes. Hello there. <laughs> Did she not hear me? Um. Hmm. This is obnoxious. I feel like this is the best for her, but we're not doing her route right now. Um. We will do this one, maybe. Oh my. I may have made a mistake. Tungja Jetta. Bonjour. Ola. Sveki. Cho. Niho. Never mind, she probably got it the first time. Is everything okay up there? We're not really establishing any communication. I bend down and pick up her drop shoe. Do you want your shoe back? You have to give me a sign or I'll leave it here and go. Do you want me to give you your shoe? She stares at me for a moment. Biting her lip, she nods vigorously twice and holds out her hand. I'ma climb the tree. I'll be right up. <laughs> I wrap my legs around the trunk and begin to climb. I've been doing this since I was a kid. It's easy. I'm a pretty good judge of trees. And because of that, I don't think climbing out onto the same branch she's sitting on is a great idea. Instead, I get up to her level and hold out my hand with the shoe in it. <laughs> After a moment, she scoots closer and snags the shoe from my grip. She still doesn't say anything or make any move to put her shoe on, so I shrug and climb back down. No point in harassing her if she wants to be left alone. Thanks. She speaks so quietly I almost didn't hear it. So she can talk after all. So, I'll see you around sometime. Mm. She looks at me, then shrugs with just one shoulder, the key on her air sw swaying. Okay, then. Snake Hall girls are weird. You say that now. One day, you're gonna smooch that girl. I knows it. Students assembled for blue magic gossip amongst themselves about what they might do with the power of illusion. One falcon boy, his face and hair decorated with glitter, is gesturing so wildly that at first no one sees the door open. Mill about all you like. It's your own time you're wasting. I have no objections to failing the lot of you at the next exam. A flurry of robes as students scramble for seats. Here you will be learning the subtle art of blue magic. At least some of you will. I thoroughly expect this subject to go over some of your heads. Blue is the color of change. That is, altering what is already there. Not creating, not destroying. It is commonly used in conjunction with other magical styles in order to perform alchemic transmutations and other alterations of essence. Blue magic can also be used to change the effects of an existing spell, to cast or dispel illusions, or to change locations without movement through intervening space. For a skilled blue magician, reality is fluid. All things can be changed. Yet few minds are capable of grasping the true range of possibilities. We'll see what you're worth. I got one. The art of illusion involves changing not what a thing is, but how it is perceived. That perception comes in many forms. The illusion of taste or smell requires as much magic as that of sight. But sight is the most immediately apparent to most humans, and therefore where we begin. To change what is seen, your power must first understand what is seen, and enhance it. To create or strengthen light. Light alone can be a tool or a weapon. A guide in darkness. A signal. A distraction. A blinding flash. Concentrate. Focus your thoughts on changing the light around you. Light. A gentle glow improves visibility in a location adjacent to the caster. Learning them low-level spells. 
Heading back to my room, I spot my neighbor, the blue-haired boy, on his hands and knees on the floor. You okay? What? Oh, sorry, I... I dropped my key. He straightens out his cape and unlocks his door. Sorry. I'm not sure what he's apologizing to me for. So, you're an exchange student, right? Where are you from? Um... So, Illyria is where we're really from. I'll just say Europe this time. Europe. I decide to be vague about it. Europe, a long way away. I just shrug like it's not a big deal. Do you like it here? So far, sure. I guess you're probably from an old wizard family like Donald, huh? Yeah, kind of. Me and Logan are wild seeds. My twin brother, he's in Falcon Hall, so everything here is pretty new to us. Twin wild seeds? Wild seeds, magical kids born to non magical parents, happen all over the world, but they're very rare. Two in the same family is pretty much impossible from what my parents told me. Is that weird? Huh, this is completely different from, uh, last time. I mean, it's just unusual. It's not weird. Yeah, kind of. It doesn't generally work like that. Wizard brothers means wizard parents. Do you have a brother? No, it's just me. So it evens out, right? That doesn't make any sense, but I don't want to make him worry about being adopted or whatever, so I shrug. Do you think... Heads up! We instinctively turn in his direction to be struck in the face by a stiff breeze carrying a payload of paper confetti. Very nicely done. Not bad, huh? Luke brushes paper bits off his robe. I think it needs more. Um, I'll see you guys later, okay? With that, I escape to my own room. <laughs> Alright, well that was a new thing I haven't seen yet. Poor Luke. I intended to be early to my first green magic class, but somehow Professor Potsdam was already there when I arrived. Hello, little seedling. Please, take a seat. She greets the rest of the arrivals with equal enthusiasm. Today, you're going to learn about green magic, the magic of life. This is a very important skill for any witch or wizard to have, especially when you get to be a certain age. Your body is a garden to be cared for. With proper tending, it could last you for centuries. Slowly, carefully, you must encourage your subjects to grow in the direction you prefer. Remember, life has its own flow. You must understand its nature in order to coax it along. You cannot simply wave your hand and change a bear into a boar, unless the bear was designed that way to begin with. The better you understand the flow of life, the more your own strength will naturally increase. It is a slow path, but a rewarding one. I got one again. Life by its nature comes to know itself. The longer any being has been alive, the more fixed its pattern. Your own bodies can tell you what they need. When they hunger, when they feel pain or pleasure, when something is out of balance. The first building block of green magic is learning to listen to life to hear its song and see the shape of it. When your fingers can pick out that pattern, you will find the strands that are missing or damaged. This spell allows you to judge a life's strength and its weaknesses. After all, you'll need to know where the damage lies before you can heal it. Diagnosis. Determines the current state of health of a living target and locates ailments and injuries. A useful spell to learn right off the bat. Ooh. 
When I arrive at the classroom for black magic, I notice that a lot of the students look pretty nervous. The rest look almost too excited. Everyone catches their breath as Professor Postum enters the room. Hello, my little lapidaries! I hope you've all brought clean hands as you will be using them. For those of you who are new to our magical traditions, I should reassure you that black magic has nothing to do with death or evil. There's no such thing as evil magic. There's only magic. The bad and the good come from how you choose to use it. Black is the color of weight, solidity, and permanence. Black magic is the magic of enchantment in physical form. With black magic, you can sculpt matter into works of art, or imbue magical wands and charms. This does mean that cursed items are enchanted with black magic as well, but that is the caster's choice, not the magic's. A pale girl with dark hair raises her hand. Yes, Raven. Ah, this must be Raven Darkstar. Since you're enchanting matter, and bones are matter, you could use black magic to animate a skeleton, right? That's an interesting question. You could certainly enchant a skeleton to hold a spell or react in some way. You could set a skull to chatter its jaw when anyone came near, like an alarm. But to make something that could walk around and act on its own, you'd need to bind a spirit to it. That calls for another kind of magic. We will get to combine techniques later in the year. The girl sits down. She certainly wants to show off what a goth she is, but she doesn't really nail the attitude. Now, please remove your gloves if you are wearing any and let's get started. Alright, my first one that I got two. Professor Potsdam walks around the room, placing a small stone cube on each disc. Take hold of the stone. Let your fingertips explore the surface. What you feel with touch is not important. You must identify that touch in order to move beyond it to the true pattern. An object knows itself only in part. The longer it has held a form, the more that form is fixed within it. Let your mind go inside the object and feel its pattern, both where it is strong and where it is weak. When you understand the whole of the pattern, you will know any secrets hidden within. Huh. There's a little bead of gold at the center of this cube. Inspection. Detects weak points and hidden details within one target object. Can be useful if you're in a dungeon and you're looking for a weak wall that maybe you can knock down. It's very situational. I intended to be early to my first white magic class, but when several minutes pass with no sign of a teacher, I wonder if I overdid it. The other students are starting to become restless when Professor Potsdam finally appears. Good morning, Starshines! You'll need to sit down before we can start, but take your time. Relax, get comfortable. That's a very important, that's very important, rather, when working with this particular style of magic. Taking her at her word, I yawn and stretch before I settle into my seat. To some people, white is the absence of color, a black, a blank canvas. In the non-magical world, white is a complete spectrum, all colors combined into one. To different eyes, white magic is both everything and nothing. White magic is the tool we use to access the spiritual realm. Ghosts, dreams, creatures from other planes, the thoughts and feelings of those around you. White magic will open these doors and allow you to communicate with all that is normally hidden. Increasing your facility for white magic will also improve your ability to learn other forms of magic. White magic is often considered the least practical of skills, and yet its depths are infinite. Literally infinite, if I understand her. 
Under the pentachromatic system, white magic is the key to the other world and all that lies beyond. Now, there is one thing I need to warn you about. Some people have tried to use white magic to control minds and spirits, instead of asking for their aid. Don't do it. You will regret it. Now, shall we go on with the lesson? If she really wanted to discourage people, why did she mention it at all? Anyone wild seed wouldn't know what's possible, and anyone wizard born ought to know better. Maybe she's just a bit absent-minded and doesn't realize that her warning might have the opposite effect. Yeah. <laughs> Possum is up to something. I never did really learn what it was in the first game. Maybe we'll learn more. Anyway, I had better pay attention to the lecture now. Ooh, a two. The world that you see around you with mortal eyes is only a tiny sliver of the infinite realms that exist beyond. Many are far from your reach, but others brush up against the edges of this world. They can see you, and with the right eyes, you can see them. Opening yourself will allow you to detect minds and spirits near you, but it will also make you more visible to them. Most spirits take little notice of those who cannot see them, but may react quite differently to someone on their level. Caution and good manners are important skills to develop in the study of white magic. Spirit Sense detects nearby sentience including ghosts and creatures of the other world. I'm relaxing in my room after a day of classes when I hear raised voices in the hallway outside. But it turns out I was right! What can I say? I'm an overachiever. This is not funny. Hey, it's no big deal. All I did was use a little magic to blow confetti into her hair. The confetti was on fire! That's what the water balloon was for. Anyway, you hate Angela. That's not the point. She notices me standing at the entrance to my room. Franco, right? What do you think about a guy who goes around setting girls' hair on fire? That's not what happened. Um... <laughs> this is a weird thing, because I don't think either of them are romanceable. Um, I think if I did this, I'd get more points with Luke. This, I might get more points with William. <laughs> and this is just like, eh, whatever. So I'll, I'll do this on the off chance that means I get more points with William. A scalp burn could be pretty nasty. Exactly! Look, I tested it on Luke first, okay? It's flash paper. It goes out in a second even without the water. It wasn't dangerous. And Angela's a senior. If anything had gone wrong, she could heal it without even blinking. Double backup plan. If you're so clever, how come you got caught? What good is a prank without an audience? But now you're stuck in detention with Grabby tomorrow. So I won't have to see you all day. Ugh! She throws up her hands and walks away. Sorry about Urchin. Um... <laughs> she is annoying. Um... Yeah, for William's sake. Your sister's feisty. You're welcome to her. Don't think I've ever seen her interested in a guy. Or anyone, really. So you've got your work cut out for you. Not what I meant. Whatever. Who's Angela, anyway? Oh, she's a senior in Butterfly Hall. Short red hair, kind of a prissy princess. You'd know her if you'd met her. And why did you try to set her hair on fire? If you'd met her, you'd know that too. Besides, it was only a little fire. So now Grabs will make me scrape up chewing gum with my toenails or something. I hear he's got a nasty imagination. He's not so bad. If you don't piss him off. Yeah, not gonna help. 
Besides, I need a windmill to tilt it. A... What? A big monster? An illusion? A tilting windmill is a monster. No, it's a reference. Sorry. Your English is so good, I forget it's not your first language. Maybe he's the one whose English is strange. Did you ever think about that? We're coming to the end of our first week! I have heard that on Saturday mornings in America, it is traditional for all people to watch cartoons. Of course, there is no television or other low-world culture at a magical school, but I wonder if they might have some replacements set up to entertain the students. So when someone knocks on my door in the morning, I assume it's my hallmates coming to invite me for some fun. Many! Hi! Hello? Are you looking for someone? I'm looking for you! You are Franco Franco, the foreign exchange student, aren't you? Yes. I'm so glad you're here! Our communities can become so insulated. It's so important to learn other viewpoints. I'm Minnie Cochran. I'm in Butterfly Hall. I wanted to stop by and offer you any help I could. I can take you all around campus, tell you about our customs. Are you from the student council too? Well, not yet. Wait, what do you mean too? Because I already have a... I hear the footsteps of someone else walking into our hall. Oh, good. You're up. Good morning. Making new friends? I'm not sure. I thought someone had sent her to be your replacement. Sent me? I'm not giving up my post that quickly. Minnie looks back and forth between us. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you'd been assigned an official guide. I was just trying to help. Hey, I'm sure he appreciates it. There will be times when it's more convenient for him to talk to someone in his own class. So this butterfly girl is a freshman too. Well, if you two have business, I'll get out of your way. But please feel free to talk to me if you need help with anything. Everyone's so helpful around here. With the professors and William and now Minnie, all the goodwill is almost exhausting. Maybe it's the American way. Bye for now! She waves and walks away. Nice girl. <laughs> Too perky this early. Um, I will say, just in case I inadvertently uh, um, upset William. <laughs> Perky mini. <laughs> um, I'll do that. She came up with a whole plan to help me when I never even met her. Well, butterflies are supposed to be friendly. If you hadn't stopped her, she would have dragged me around all day. There are worse things. William smiles and gives his head a little shake. Anyway, I need to give you a little bit of information about Saturday activities. I can't stay long. I have a lot to get done this weekend. But that part I'll tell you about on Monday. Okay. So there are two major things you can do on the weekends that you can't during the rest of the week. First, there are shuttle vans to take students to the local mall. It's not very big, but it's a change of pace. People like to go there to socialize and eat out. The space is shared with the locals, but there are spells set up to keep them from noticing anything unusual about the Iris Academy kids. Don't push your luck, though. Even if there's no real damage, if you cause trouble, you'll definitely end up in detention. No showing off magic in public. Well, that's just common sense. There is also a shop for enchanted items, things that will boost your mana or your attunement to different colors, and so on. Useful things. If you buy a charm, it will help you learn spells faster. Oh, and speaking of which... He hands me a white paper envelope. There's no address on it, and it isn't sealed. 
Looking inside, I find a $5 bill. Hooray, allowance money. Your weekly allowance. The student council generally handles the distribution. Five bucks a week won't get you very far, though. So save up if you want more options. A lot of students have no experience of handling money. Speaking of which, do you know what all the coins are? I can figure it out. They all have their values written on them, it's not that hard. Though it would help if the bigger coins were always worth more. Dimes don't make sense. What's the other major thing to do on the weekends? Practice. On weekends, there are simple training dungeons available. No real threats or puzzles, but you can walk around and practice spells in the field. There's a field in the dungeon? Not usually. In a real-world environment, instead of the classroom, so you can see how your spells would work in an actual exam. Now, like I said, I do have a lot to organize this weekend, so I should be going. You can take the day to review on your own, or I can show you the way to the dungeons, or if you'd rather go to the mall, Donald can- He's got detention. Oh. I'm sure I can find my way. What do I want to do with my Saturday? Um... I don't have a lot of money right now, so I think I'll study and save up my money for a bit. And the dungeons, I don't know that many spells yet. I think I'll go over my notes from the week and make sure I've got the basics down. There's time for other things later. Great. All right. I may not see you tomorrow, so be prepared for me to wake you up early on Monday morning. What happens on Monday? You'll find out. He leaves and I go back to my room to study. Oh, we'll find out, all right. One smart. All right. <laughs>